I'm Professor E. I'm DJ Schurz. And welcome to the robot program. In today's episode, we're going to show you how to use the camera of your robot to recognize objects. Sounds pretty exciting. It's really exciting. So we're actually going to teach our robot something. Yes, we are. This is called machine learning. And we have all these robots in front of us because we can do this activity on all four of the Revolution robots. You bet we can. And so who are we going to use for this episode? We, of course, are going to use JD. Of course. Yes. Well, to begin, we're going to want to turn our JD robot on, of course. And lie him down. And on our computer, we're going to load up our Easy Builder software. And we're going to skip going to the robot course. And we're going to connect to our Wi-Fi network for the robot. And we're going to choose example projects. We're going to use JD for this example. So we're going to want to load the JD Bear project. If you have AdventureBot, load AdventureBot Bear. If you have six, load six Bear. And if you have Rolly, load Rolly Bear. So the Bear projects give us a nice clean workspace to start from. We'll skip building a robot and load your servo profile for JD if you have one. And of course, when we connect to him, he's an initialized. So stand back. And JD does his stuff. And we always start off with JD standing up. Atta boy, JD. We're going to be using the camera. So we're going to want to add the camera control by choosing Project, Add, Camera, and choose the camera device. And then click the Start button. And there's Andreas, our video guy. And what we're going to do is we're going to load the object tab where we can start beginning to train the robot objects. And to begin, we're going to use our first object, which I have here is an easy robot flyer. Okay, so he's going to learn this flyer. He is. He's, in fact, he's going to learn the picture of himself Ooh. on the flyer. So as you can see on the, so on the software, all he sees is just the image of the camera moving. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this button here that says Train New Object. And of course, I have the enter the name of the object, in which case I'm going to just enter in JD. Now I'm going to choose an area of the screen, and it puts a little square there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, just before I push any more buttons, I'm going to practice putting JD in that square and rotating it around a little bit. So you want to make sure he's right in the center of the square. You bet, because what, what's going to happen is once I push the Learn button, JD is going to start learning whatever is inside of that square. But he needs to learn it from different angles as well, so he understands what the what, what it looks like later on. We're going to push the learn button now. There you go. So you can see the the slide dial on the on the right, the progress bar. You see how it's moving. So you move it while he's learning. That's right. I'm doing that while he's learning, so that he gets all of the different angles. Now, do you see as I continue? He's done learning, but do you see as I move it around, it flashes pink sometimes mm -hmm. on the screen. There, it happened again, it happened there, it's happened a bunch of times. That means he's still learning this object. And now we can take it away, and he doesn't see it, put it back, and he's seen it. Okay, good. So let's push the close button, the done button now, and you'll see this is an image that he is learning. You can see there's a picture of it there. So if we go to tracking and choose object, we can now put this in front of the robot, and JD will put a box around what he sees. There, you can see that. He's got the box around it. And if I move it too much of an angle, he no longer sees it anymore because he's not learning anymore. Okay. If you want to improve his learning, can you go back and retrain him? You can go into object mode and you can select learn while tracking. Oh, okay. If you do okay. that, he'll continue Excellent. to learn. So we're going to go back into our tracking here. We have the checkbox. Now we want the robot to speak and say what it is he saw. What we'll do is we'll click on the gear button for the camera control and we'll choose scripts. And this is a tracking start script. This script will execute every time it starts tracking an object, when it sees something. Okay? So we're going to push the pencil button on this editor, and we're going to use Blockly for this code. We'll choose Audio, Say EZB. Now we want to append two pieces of text together. We want to append the variable and a bit of text. So we'll write in here, I C A, and we'll put a space at the end. And we'll go to variables, and we'll choose the variable list here. In the drop down, we're going to choose object name, camera object name. That is the default variable that stores the name of the object we just trained. In this That's case, right. it's the word JD. We'll push the save button and save again. So 
So now when I hold this up in front of JD, I see a JD. he sees a JD. Pretty good. Yes. Now we can get a little more creative. We can teach it our faces. All right, let's do that. So do you want to do you want to begin? We'll, yeah, we'll teach, teach JD him your me. face. So right now he doesn't know me from anybody else. He does not. So we got your face in there. So we're going to go to object mode, train a new object. And we'll now do I move in. my face around? You're going to, yeah. Okay. I'll show you how to do that. So we'll type in Professor E. Now choose an area of the screen right there. Now you're going to want to stand back a little further. There we go. Okay, so now just move your head back and forth, left and right, and up and down a little bit. There you go. And you can come a little closer so you get more of the box on your face. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to push the button and just do exactly what you just had done. Turn your face side to side, up to down. There you go. Keep going. Up and down. There you go. Perfect. So now he's recognizing your face. Now what we'll do is we'll push the done button. And now let's train. I see a professor <laughs> Now let's train my face. Okay, so he's using the same script that we already programmed. Because we're using that default variable is going to put in whatever name we called the things that we've trained it to see. That's, you got it. So I'm going to choose the screen here. And I'm going to put my face in there, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rotate my face back and forth. There, so now he sees my face. Okay. Okay, so I'll choose done. I see a DJ. Now he's going to speak the last thing he trained. That's why he's speaking Oh, now. okay, gotcha. So now that we have object training, our tracking set, so now we can do this. We can put this in front of the robot. I see a JD. Okay. And now you see this tracking here. We want this tracking number to go down. Now we're ready to learn something or to detect something new. So now let's do this with you. Let's put your face okay. in front of JD. There we go. I see a professor. <laughs> Excellent. And of course, once the tracking goes away, we can put my face back in there. I see a DJ. <laughs> so this is great. So normally we can have our robots do face tracking, but they're tracking any old face. Mm -hmm. Now, our robot has actually learned our faces and how we're different from each other. Yes. Pretty exciting. It is. Very exciting. Now what we can do is we can have the robot do something based upon what it's actually recognizing. Oh, okay. okay. So we're getting fancy. Get some actions in here. You bet. So we're going to click on the gear button. We're going to go back to our scripts. And we're going to click on the code. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want the robot to speak what it sees and also do a different action when it sees some me versus you versus the, the flyer. Okay, okay, so we're going to need some logic for that. So we're going to choose logic. We're going to choose the if condition. And we'll put the if condition underneath say. And we are going to click on here. We're going to add an else if. And we're going to add an else. Okay. Under logic, we're going to choose a comparison. And we're going to take our variable. We're going to add that in here. And we're going to choose our object name. And then we're going to put some text because we're going to compare it against the text of the object that we've uh, detected. So in this case, we're going to type in JD. And then we're going to have JD, when he detects himself, let's have him point. Sure. Okay. So we'll choose point. And now we're going to take this block of code that we've just entered. We're going to right click on it and duplicate it. Now we have another duplication of just that block, which we can drag into our else if. So we're going to give him a different if command this time, something right. else he's going to test. And so now this one is going to be Professor E. So we'll type in Professor E. And for the movement for Professor E, we're going to want JD to, how about wave? Sure. Okay. So he'll wave when he sees you. And now anything else, which means me, we want him to do something as well. So let's have JD in auto position bow. I think bow to the robot overlord. There we go. Now so. the reason that else is going to be you is because you're the only other thing that we've trained him to see. And if you want to learn more about if else logic, you can check out one of our other episodes. Click save and save. Now we can start with our flyer. I see. And there he goes. There he Perfect. Goes. Now we don't, the point doesn't go back into standing position, so we'll just push. Just stop. reset him. There we go to reset him. Now our tracking's gone back, so we know he's not tracking anything else right now. Tracking's off. So he's ready to see something new. He's ready to see you. He's ready to see me. Okay, let's try it. 
All right, is he gonna wave at me? Sorry. And he waves at me, perfect. That's what we programmed him to do. We did. Now let's see what he does when he sees the robot overlord. Very nice, good. Thank you, JD. We've seen how you can teach JD to learn different objects, and now you can get creative with this feature and continue teaching your robot. In this episode, we showed you how you can train your robot to recognize an object. This can be any type of object, from an image to even a face. To get started, you're going to connect your robot as usual to the Easy Builder software and load the Bear project. The Bear project provides a clean workspace without any additional controls, and this allows you to add only the controls that you need for the particular activity. For this project, we'll need to add the camera device control and click Start to activate the camera. Within the camera control, click on the Object tab and Train New Object. You're going to choose a name that represents the object that you're trying to teach your robot. Later, if you want your robot to speak the name, this is the name that it's going to use. So make sure you choose something that is accurate and descriptive of your object. When you hold your object up to the camera, you should be able to see it in the screen. And if you click on the object, a square will appear around it. You want to practice moving your object into different orientations and different angles and to make sure you're really centering that object within the square. This will make your robot's training more accurate when it's learning the object. Once you finish practicing, press the Learn button and center the object within the square. Your robot is now going to begin to learn the object. If you keep moving the object just a little bit within the square, now your robot will learn what that object looks like from different angles and different rotations. Just move it a little bit and slowly your robot will improve its learning. This allows your robot to recognize the object even if it's not facing it straight on. Even once the training says it's finished, your robot will continue to learn and improve its accuracy around recognizing that object. You can tell that the robot is still learning if you see a pink square rather than a blue square. Back in the camera control, choose the tracking tab and click object to start the tracking process. Your robot will now recognize what you trained it to see and you should be able to see a blue square around that object. We can also add code that will be executed when our robot begins to track something. Click on the pencil icon next to Tracking Start. This will allow you to create a script that will be executed once the robot begins tracking an object. You can use Blockly as the default interface for creating this script. In this episode, we decided to have the robot speak when it recognized the object, and we wanted it to say the name of the object that we trained. To do that, we selected Say Easy B and then we had to create a string of text. We do this by using the create text with command, and this allows us to append two different pieces of information together. The first is a string of text, and a string is a sequence of characters that stores the text information that we want our robot to say. So we type in whatever we want to say, such as, I see a, and we leave it there. We want to make sure to leave a space at the end of that string, because if not, the robot will think that the last characters that it sees are to be added to the name of the variable, so it'll combine it all together into one word. In this case, we want to add the variable called camera object name. This is a variable that is storing whatever the name is of the last object that the robot recognized. So if it detects a banana, it's going to store the name that we gave that banana banana1. If it sees an apple, it's then going to update the contents of that variable so it says apple1, or whatever name we gave the object. So back when you were training your object, this is the name that is going to be stored within that variable. As a final result, our script will be a say easy b command that says the first line, our string, and then appends it to the updated variable contents, whatever is the last object that was detected by the robot. If we want different actions or different speech to occur depending on the object that was detected, we can use if-else logic. You can learn more about if-else logic in another episode. In this episode, we used comparison logic to compare the contents of the variable camera object name to a selected string of text. So for example, if we type in the string of text JD and have it compared against the variable, when the variable contents is equal to the string JD, whatever commands are under that if condition will be executed. 
If the comparison is not true, the code will go on and test the next comparison statement. If none of those comparisons are true, the code will default to the else condition, and it will execute whatever speech or actions are in the else portion of the if-else statement. An easy way to create multiple if conditions is by right-clicking and duplicating the code that you've already written. Once saved, this script will be executed once the robot begins to detect an object. Underneath the camera preview, you can watch the tracking value to see when an object is no longer being tracked and a new object is able to be detected. You can try teaching your robot different objects and share your results with the Easy Robot community. Thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time. Why are objects rotated while the robot is learning? What does the pink colored square signify? Which variable stores the name of the last recognized object? Find the answers at therobotprogram.com.